partial pressure we can kind we can find the partial pressure of a dry gas there are so many gases when they are prepared in the lab they are collected over water so any gas that is collected from the surface of the water that will be a moist gas and the partial pressure of that or the total pressure of that moist gas will be equal to the partial pressure of dry gas plus partial pressure of water vapors because the moist gas is actually a mixture of the dry gas and water vapors and these are the non reacting one so the total pressure exerted by the moist gas that will be equal to the partial pressure of the dry gas and partial pressure of the water vapors the partial pressure exerted by water vapors that is also called as aqueous tension so total pressure of moist gas is equal to partial pressure of dry gas plus aqueous tension they these two formulas are same just the wording is different the partial pressure of water vapor is also called as the aqueous tension and the partial pressure of dry gas that will be equal to partial pressure of moist gas minus aqueous tension so when you will subtract the partial pressure of the water vapors from the total pressure of the moist gas then you will get the partial pressure of the dry gas so this one is the first application of the dalton's law of partial pressure the second one is <coughs> respiration you know that the respiration has the human respiration pores that has two phases one is inhalation or inspiration and other is exhalation or expiration in inhalation the oxygen moves from air to lungs and in expiration the co2 moves from lungs to air this movement of the gases is actually due to the difference in their partial pressure in these two mediums air and lungs our lungs are spongy in nature they are not muscular so the lungs cannot contract or relax so that they may take in the gases or take out the gases that's why this partial pressure the difference of the partial pressure of oxygen and co2 in air and lungs it helps a lot in the respiration of the humans the partial pressure of oxygen in air is higher while in lungs is that is low so it assists in the respiration inhalation stage and the par partial pressure of co2 in lungs is greater than that in the air so due to this difference in the partial pressure the co2 is easily exhaled from the area of high partial pressure to the area of low partial pressure <clears throat> the third application is pressurized cabin of aeroplanes <clears throat> an aeroplane usually flies at a height of 30000 to 43000 meters from the surface of the earth or 30000 to 43 3000 feet almost now at such high altitude you know the concentration of air that is very low and usually at 30000 to 43000 feet the total pressure of the air is around about 1 to 2 psi which at the sea level is normally 14.7 psi pounds per square inch at such low pressure of 1 to 2 psi a human can remain conscious for less than 1 minute and after that obviously that condition leads to the death of the human beings now when you feel that the aeroplane is flying at a very high altitude but the people sitting inside the cabin or inside the plane they are 
feeling as if they are respiring the normal air. Actually, the inner of the aeroplane that is pressurized with the oxygen and the concentration of oxygen or the air is maintained inside that cabin so that the passengers can easily respire and even the during the respiration obviously the passengers will release co2 in their exhalation and they will be consuming oxygen continuously so this air is also exchanged with the external environment and all these pressurization system of the aeroplane that is automatic only if there is some malfunctioning takes place then the pilots take control of it otherwise mostly it is the automatic operation now the pressure inside the aeroplane that is maintained from 11 to 12 psi and this is a complete system if you will study the structure of the aeroplane and like that you will be easily more easily able to get it that how the air is used in the aeroplane by the passengers so this 11 to 12 psi pressure is maintained inside the aeroplane and it is just like you are moving at 6000 to 8000 feet high when you normally in the hilly areas when you move 6000 to 8000 at the altitude then the pressure of the air is 11 to 12 psi even if the outside of the plane is flying at 30000 to 43000 feet the inside of the plane that is flying actually at the 6000 to 8000 in the sense of the partial pressure or total pressure of the air but the pressure is not maintained exactly 14 psi inside the aeroplanes because for that purpose the body of the plane that will have we will have to modify it because the plane should be able to withstand such huge pressure and also the differential pressure of the external environment and inside the plane that also affects a lot so we use the Dalton's law of the partial pressure to adjust the pressure of the air inside the plane in a way that gives extreme comfort to the passengers who are flying or who are going at a very high altitude now the fourth application is that is the deep sea divers we are living in this atmosphere where we are feeling the pressure of air almost equal to the 760 tor or 180 m but when a diver moves very deep in the sea then he is or she is surrounded by completely by the water and the external pressure on the body of that diver that is very high almost it increases from 1 to 3 atm for every you can say 10 to 15 or 100 feet depth in the sea now the deep sea divers they take a mixer which is called as heliox it is usually the mixer of helium and oxygen now this heliox is actually a you may say breathing gas artificial breathing gas and how much helium and oxygen should be in that mixture of which is heliox it depends upon the plan of the diver that how much depth he is going to cover and normally the partial pressure of oxygen remains maximum up to the 10 percent mean the concentration of oxygen remains maximum up to the 10 percent in the heliox so <clears throat> deep, deep, deep sea divers do not take nitrogen with them because that may result in the nitrogen toxicity in the body which can cause convulsions coma and death because nitrogen dissolves in blood and nitrogen toxicity takes place because the diver is feeling very high external pressure due to the surrounding water now this heliox it is also used in the medical sciences for the artificial breathing because heliox is a mixture of helium and oxygen and you know helium is a very lighter gas so this mixer has very less density and it offers much less resistance in the airways of the lungs so the persons that cannot put much effort in the breathing because to breathe the normal air you will have to put some effort and that normal air offers huge resistance in the airway 
passages towards the lungs. So the persons that cannot put such kind of huge effort in breathing, they can use this heliox, which offers much less resistance in the airway passages towards the lungs. So heliox is also used in the medical purpose and from 1930s and so on, it is being used in the medical purpose for the patients who cannot breathe the normal air. So these are the important applications of the Dalton's law and it